Awesome. Alrighty, sorry for the wait, everybody. How's everyone doing? Yeah, that's the most energy I've seen in a room all day, and I hope we keep it up. Woo! All right, so my name is Katie Lampkin. I am a PM at Intuit, a platform and open source. I focus on our CI CD platform, so that's ran, that scans from Jenkins all the way through Argo CD and Argo rollouts. Today, our presentation will be on click-free environment promotion with application sets and Progressive 6. Now, allow Michael to introduce himself. And I'm Michael Crenshaw. Uh, I am a back-end software engineer at Intuit on our Argo CD team. That means I help keep our 50 instances of Argo CD running and about 20,000 applications syncing. Uh, I also contribute heavily to Argo CD um, in the open source world. Great, so let's go over our agenda really quickly today. So we're gonna cover today's problem statement, which happens to be our promotion strategy. We're gonna talk about the goals that we want to accomplish in fixing our promotion strategy, what potential solutions are out there today, and the solution that we are going to be discussing today, which is application sets and progressive syncs. So just a little bit about Intuit, right? Michael alluded to a little bit of the scale at Intuit, but Intuit's a very large company that powers very large platforms. As you can see, we have over 2,000 services and over 1,000 teams that run and power those services. So that means developer innovation and developer productivity is extremely important to Intuit. And you can see since 2019, we've had a 9x increase in developer productivity, which is great but we don't wanna stop there. We wanna continue finding what those pain points are for our developers, continue making sure that we can reduce that toil, increase developer delight, and see what we can do about continuing to improve our metrics. So what problem are we gonna focus on today? So let's take a look at today's promotion strategy, right? Like I alluded to previously, our CI platform is Jenkins with a series of Groovy scripts. And we combine that with Argo CD, and that is our promotion strategy today. So what does that mean? When an application developer wants to deploy their service to Kubernetes, they get a Jenkins pipeline that contains not only their build, but every single step that they need to deploy to their individual environments. Dev, test, stage, prod, sometimes there's a perf environments. Development teams also have the ability to create custom environments as well, if that fits their use case. So as you can see, there are going to be many steps in this Jenkins pipeline. And when they are ready to deploy to those environments, we call Argo CD sync via CLI and invoke Argo CD to make those changes against those environments. Now, what are the downsides that are causing pain points with our developers? So no auto sync. This process involves manual effort from our developers, which is not something that they want to do. No GitOps. We have a situation where a developer can't necessarily check Git and see exactly what's running in these individual environments. And we have these long, complex pipelines, right? So I talked about that in the beginning. And what are the pain points behind these long pipelines? Well, it, if a developer wants to go and introduce a change to these pipelines, which they often do, for example, adding in a series of integration tests they want to execute in E2E, adding performance tests in perf, Maybe it's adding security scanning at a certain level because this application is really important to our company and we need to make sure it's secure. Well, when you have these long pipelines and you go in and you make these changes, it can be very difficult for developers to make those changes. And in return, when we are executing these pipelines and we're actually deploying to these environments, these build logs can be thousands of lines long. And so developers troubleshooting failed builds, failed deploys, can take hours and ultimately they may not be able to do this by themselves and they'll have to reach out to a platform support team to assist them. For our CI team, 60% of our support requests today are necessary for troubleshooting failed builds. So that's an undesirable non-self-service experience for our application developers. So what are our goals? What do we believe we need to accomplish in order to help relieve these developer pain points? less manual toil, right? We want to increase developer productivity and that means removing that manual toil from that workflow. Synchronization across all environments, which goes hand in hand with a GitOps declarative strategy. We wanna be able to say, hey, 
What's in Git is what is across all of our environments, and all of our environments should be the same and on the same version. And finally, we want automatic failure detection, and we want an easy process for developers to troubleshoot these failures. So what are some potential solutions? App of apps with sync waves, great potential solution. But unfortunately, you know, with some industries that are heavily compliant, you require an option, uh, you require an option for human approval, and app of apps with sync waves does not allow for that option. There's also no single manifest to define that strategy, so you're still in a position where you need to manage multiple manifests. Cargo, as I'm sure you guys have heard, there is a great new open source project called Cargo. It has an awesome feature set, also could be more than you need. And finally, the topic that we are going to talk about today, app sets and progressive syncs. It's easy to adopt if you're already using app sets, which I know a lot of you are, as I've already talked to you at the Intuit booth. It has advanced promotion strategies all located within a single manifest, and it's already built into Argo CD. So when you're using Argo CD, you get these features right out of the box. And I'll hand it over to Michael to talk a little bit more about application sets. So as Katie said, a lot of y'all know a lot about application sets already, but for those who don't know, um, I'll take a minute just to give a refresher. Application sets are a CR, a custom resource, just like applications. Um, and it's all about drying out the application manifest management. In other words, you don't want to have a bunch of application manifests uh, when you could express things much more simply. Um, so an application set basically defines a source of truth. It can either be static or dynamic. Uh, and that source of truth produces a list and that list is templated over what basically just looks like an application manifest. Um, so the sorts of things that you can do with that are have an application automatically generated for every cluster that you have configured in Argo CD. Um, and that's useful for things like deploying cluster add-ons. Like at Intuit, we deploy Argo rollouts and NumaFlow to every single cluster. And rather than having to create a new application manifest for every single one of those 200-ish clusters we have, uh, we can write one application set, and it can just, boom, create all those for us. Um, something else you can do is make your developers' lives easier. Uh, one of the generators available for application sets is called the Git Directories Generator. So if you have a mono repo with all of the manifests for a certain teams or even the whole organization's um, applications, you just have one directory for each application, and each directory contains your manifests. The application set generator can loop over those directories, create all your applications, point them to the appropriate directory, uh, and now your applications just exist automatically. That lets developers self-serve. They can create and delete those directories at will, um, and it just happens for them, like, like magic. No manual creation and deletion of application manifests. I see people nodding and, and laughing like this is an excellent idea. I love to see that. It really does make life so much easier. So I'll give a quick demo. Uh, it's so much easier to tell what a feature is when you actually get to see it in action. Um, so here I have an application set. I want to make it full screen, but I can't. Oh, this thing's huge anyway. Uh, so let me pause. I've got a generator, which is just a static list. That could be something much more dynamic, like a Git generator, cluster generator, et cetera. But for here, I've just statically defined my dev and EDE environment. So that's what I loop over, and it's templating that information into an application manifest. So I'm git opsing my app set manifest. I sync it. You see two applications were created as child resources, and now they're created in the main interface where you'd expect to see them and I just go and manually sync them since I didn't define any particular sync strategy for this. Um, and I'll also click in and show you what the application looks like. It's just a service and a deployment, so a really simple API. If I wanna make a change, I want to add a new application or a new environment, I do that just by going to Git, doing everything GitOps style. Um, I add my new environment just in that list uh, and check that in. And again, in, in a real environment, these clusters would probably be defined as like Argo CD cluster secrets. So you wouldn't be doing this in Git. It would just happen when you register a new cluster in Argo CD. Um, but for the sake of just showing how it works, you see that we've added a new environment. That's the only line in the diff. I hit sync, and now we've got our three applications. 
um, super easy, and mainly it's just easy to understand. You can look at that app set manifest and know precisely what's going to happen. There are no secrets and no surprises. So that's application sets. That's everyone who's already used application sets over and over again and knows what it's about. You can wake up now because this is the new goodness. Progressive syncs are a way to orchestrate the applications that are generated by application sets. And you saw a second ago, I just had to manually click sync to synchronize those apps. With progressive syncs, that just happens for you. And it lets you gate each stage of synchronization, each application or group of applications by healthy status. This means that any application that you currently deploy that has the ability to go into like progressing or degraded state is supported out of the box by progressive syncs. So things like deployment, stateful sets, ingresses, all of the things that Argo CD supports out of the box with health checks, and anything that you can create a health check for, which is any custom resource, progressive syncs can support. And the way it works is we sync a particular step. Um, we wait until that app or group of apps becomes healthy, and then we move on to the next step and sync those and so on and so forth. So at each stage, you're sure that what is actually being synced is safe to sync because the previous environment has confirmed that for you. So again, much, much better to see it in action than just talk. So I've got another uh, GitOps application set manifest. And this time I've defined this new field called um, strategy and then under that rollout sync. And you can see I've defined three uh, steps for the three different environments that I'm going to deploy to. And each of these environments targets a particular label that I've defined on the application. So kind of a typical way people organize applications, put a label on it. Uh, we're taking advantage of that pattern here. So once I've synced it, you see that all three apps were created. And now the magic is happening. So that first one is being synced. It became healthy. Now E to E is going to start syncing magically. And that's going to become healthy as well. And then the third application goes, starts syncing, and becomes healthy. And I didn't click anything. It just happened for me. Well, I clicked sync on the application set. But you could still automate that and make that update through some automation. So now I'm going to show you making a quick change, probably the most common type of change that you're ever going to make in your applications, bump an image tag. And in this case, I've just defined it as a value in the Helm values block, like Argo CD image updater. Uh, edits that field, um, so it would automatically do that, uh, allow you to use this progressive sync feature. So you can see the only change is just bumping that image tag. I hit synchronize. Again, that could be automated, but now it starts syncing the new image tag, it goes to progressing, and then eventually to healthy. And this image tag, tag 0.2, has no bugs, has no issues. So it is going to progress all the way through all of the steps and synchronize all my applications all the way through prod. Again, safely at every stage, I know that the previous stage became healthy before I synced. Um, and so I'll just pop into the app to confirm and convince everyone the image tag has been updated. So our uh, progressive delivery of that change is complete. That's environment promotion. That's maybe the simplest uh, version of progressive syncs. This one is a bit more like what we do at Intuit. Um, and we actually use this to deploy the metrics extension server uh, that Leo demoed a couple of talks ago. Um, we use progressive syncs to deploy the same server to every single cluster at Intuit. And I'm going to simulate that here. You won't see our actual production setup because it's like hundreds of apps. But here I've just created eight uh, items in this list. Um, I've put two apps in the development environment, uh, two apps in the development environment, three apps in EDE, three in prod. And I wanted to pause here and point out one more field that I set, which is this um, max update field. So sometimes when you're syncing a bunch of applications at once, maybe you have a cluster that is sensitive to like lots of churn, and you want to slow things down for a particular step. This lets you say only sync one app at a time, or you can use percentages too and say only sync 10% uh, of my apps at a time. So now that I've defined the strategy, I've defined three ways. I'll go ahead and sync up this app. 
you can see eight apps were created. Two on the top are dev, and then we've got a row for E to E, and then a row for prod, which you'll see when I scroll down. Those first two apps synced simultaneously, so that's already a difference from the previous demo. And this wave has been configured with Max Update 1, so each of these apps is going to synchronize one at a time. And then finally we go to Prod, which is going to synchronize simultaneously. And in this case, I've deployed a change which is um, safe, so everything's just going to be deployed out with no problems. And this is just super pretty to watch. Like, I've been given permission to quote Leo saying that like, he just loves this feature for deploying the metrics server. It's just satisfying to watch it go through the waves and everything deploy safely and correctly. So I'm going to bump an image tag. This time, I'm going to cheat a little bit and break one of the tags. So I think the tag for um, team either four or five's uh, application, four, uh, just so you can see what happens when stuff breaks in a progressive sync. But the other one's still the same. I'm just bumping the tag to point two. If you notice there was some templating going on in there, that's a feature in application set. I won't detail that too much, but you can template stuff with Go template in app sets. So again, everything goes out of sync. The first wave starts syncing simultaneously, and it's going to become healthy because the point two tag, as we saw earlier, is fine and safe. Um, in this case, we go one by one again. The first one goes healthy. This is the one I broke, and I set a progressive, progressing deadline for five seconds. So very quickly, it's degraded. And now we stop. And in this case, it's a bit like if you had an application that went to a degraded state, uh, you want to have an alert, something to let you know something went wrong. And then you go back, you make your change. It's going to work its way all the way through those waves again. And eventually, you're, gonna, you're going to deploy a safe and successful change. So that's what all that looks like. I'm going to pass it back to Katie to sort of uh, recap what this actually solves for us. So wow, right? I mean, within 20 minutes, we solved all of our problems. It, it's huge. Michael's a genius. Um, but really, this solution has solved a lot of the pain points that we had previously, right? And just to cover a few, you saw that you know we press the sync button. We can automate that. But besides that sync, there is no manual toil for the developers to have to deal with, right? And that has it increases developer delight by tenfold, right? That increases our delight by tenfold, so that's huge. The other biggest pain point was the automatic failure detection and the ability to troubleshoot failures throughout this process, which, as you can see, using the Argo CD UI is extremely self-service and very straightforward to see that broken heart, which we all fear, but are all able to look into and actually determine what was that failure we can recover and we can do it seamlessly while reducing our support requests and making it more self-service, right? And finally, one of the biggest things at all, one app set manifest, right? We all deal with thousands and thousands of lines of YAML. It is a problem for us. It is a problem for application developers. And so the fact that we can reduce that and manage everything with one application set manifest is a huge win. Maybe we should have titled the talk, Don't Fear the Broken Heart, like Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> Uh, Katie mentioned I'm a genius. I should point out quickly that the person who wrote this feature is Matt Groot from LinkedIn. And this whole thing came out of a discussion we had at the first in-person ArgoCon in Mountain View. Um, and then like people have built on it from there. So a lot of hands have gone into building this. Things you need to know about where the feature is. As far as application sets go, they're GA. They've been around a long time. They're in good shape. Progressive Syncs is in alpha. Uh, I chatted with someone in the hall who has given it a try. They encountered a bug. Um, you're going to encounter bugs. But the fact that we've had a few reported means that people want this. They're adopting it. Uh, and I'm really excited to get more bugs. So I hope you all will give it a try and, and submit tons of issues. Um, as far as future enhancements go, UI support could be better. Like I sort of contrived an example where we could have these nice three rows of applications. We need something where like, the UI just groups those for you, no matter what collection of applications you have, and tells you, here's your steps, here's your max update setting. Um, Regina Volashine is already working on, on application set support for the UI. They're open PRs. It's a big task, but it's underway. Uh, and I think that progressive sync support would be the next step. 
Um, something else we could do is provide reverse order app deletion. So people use app set progressive syncs a lot because they have dependencies, and sometimes you want to unwind things in the opposite direction so you don't have dependency conflicts. I'd like rollout analysis that is beyond just what you can do with health checks. It would be really nice to uh, do arbitrary analyses to make sure your application is functioning well and potentially stop a progressive sync. Technically, you could write a custom CR and put a health check on it to do that for you. Uh, we might want something a little more powerful than that, um, or a little more built in, maybe. And then finally, shared rollout strategies for multiple app sets. This is another one. There's already an open PR. In order to dry things out, maybe you have one strategy that you love and you want to make available to other teams. This would give you the ability to create a CR, build one update strategy, and let people use it across however many application sets that you want. And as Michael stated, these are the enhancements that we're currently thinking about right now and that have currently been brought up in the open source community today for this feature, for this alpha feature. We would love to continue to hear feedback from you guys. So please participate in issues within GitHub, participate in CNCF Slack, um, reach out to us. If you want to have conversations with us, we are very approachable people. We don't look very intimidating. Um, but, you know, whether you want to see us in person in the halls here at ArgoCon or KubeCon, reach out to us over CNCF Slack. Um, as you can see, Intuit is also really big in open source. So if you want to keep up to date with what Intuit does in open source, whether it be with the Argo project or our other open source project, please scan the QR code and follow us on uh, Intuit Open Source LinkedIn. And finally, if you thought this was just the greatest talk of all time, please give us feedback via this QR code. Otherwise, thank you so much. Um, no, just kidding. If you, we would love to hear your feedback. Um, all good and all opportunities for improvement. So please submit your feedback for this QR code here on the right. Thank you so much, everyone. Canaries can kind of be embedded in this. So if you're using an Argo rollout and you've got a canary strategy set up, it already knows how to mark itself as degraded if something goes wrong. Progressive sync's going to notice that it's degraded, and it'll behave exactly how you saw when I intentionally broke one of the apps. So it sort of layers on top of it. And that's the power of health checks for, uh, for progressive sync's. Is there a possibility to Sorry, what's that? Is it possible to have a soaking period to like Good question. So the question is, is it possible to have a soaking period? For example, have something run for a week and then promote it after a week? I'm not sure that I'd re recommend progressive syncs for something that's going to be that long living because I want the state in Git to be very close to the state in live. I would move that back to CI if you're going to have a whole week. Um, for a shorter period of time, there's currently no feature to add a soaking period I could imagine hacking on something that has a health check that doesn't go from progressing back to healthy for a certain period of time. You could hack in a CR that does that. Um, so it's, it's possible, but not a built-in feature. Uh, you had mentioned um, air gaps being a deficiency in Argo CD's app of apps. Um, do you see air gaps in this solution? And I guess I was wondering, where do you see that kind of fit in, if it does? I missed the first part. You mentioned app of apps. Oh, air gaps. So meaning like an approval process, like maybe everything progresses and accept production yes. without an approval. Yes. I didn't, uh, didn't demo that, but basically you can define a step that doesn't automatically sync. It just says, wait here. And then someone else has to hit the sync button in order to proceed. So you can definitely auto sync it all the way up until prod and then have someone human click that. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, does this work with an app sets in any namespace or? App sets in any namespace, yeah, it should, it should just work. Yeah, at I'll try it out. <laughs> brand new feature, 2.9 was released this morning, last night, depending on exactly when it hit. Um, that has app sets in any namespace and this should work for that. You showed the, the rollout uh, hitting the failure point and stopping. So when you fix that, does it automatically continue, or do you need to now start over from the beginning? Um, it depends on how you fix it. I think that the way you'd probably want to do it is go
go back, fix the image, because this is like sort of a bug in the image issue. I think you'd want to roll it all the way through. Um, yeah, if you're going to bump an image tag, you, you have to update it all the way through, and it is going to take some time. Yeah, so if it was just something like, hey, the image wasn't available, after a while it may fix itself, and then continue rolling forward without intervention? Yeah, if, you, okay. if there's some manual intervention you can do to unblock that one app, yes, it'll just continue progressing. The moment it hits healthy, it'll just go on like, like it, just, it would have from the beginning. And then one other thing was, I, I think from the demo I've got this, is, though, is that you were, you were showing this as a multi-environment with the implication of multi-cluster. Yep. Uh, so the, the implication here is this would need to be run from a single Argo control plane to achieve that, right? You wouldn't be able to do a sync one per cluster. Correct. Right? App sets are scoped to an Argo CD instance, so this has to be per Argo yep. CD instance. Great. Thanks. You could probably do some kind of magic to deploy apps across instances, but, you know. You mentioned the progressive is an, an alpha state. Would you recommend it for a production instance of Argo CD, or would this be experimentation for now? Well, it depends on how production production is. Uh, <laughs> our, t our team, we kind of know what app set progressive syncs is, so we're willing to use it for pro production things for us. I would not pass this to other Intuit teams yet. I would want to see it a little bit more stable. Okay, thank you. Uh, the question is, can you gate it with outside approvers? And you want to do that outside of Argo CD? Uh, in my opinion, you always gate approval in Git. It always starts in Git. I dislike solutions where you have to use some external system and hack some communication between it and Argo CD. Um, yeah, I think, I think you have to have that approval all the way back at, you know, someone has to approve the PR. Yeah, for example, in GitHub Actions, you can have like similar options and you can As Argo CD, Argo CD syncs what's in Git. It has no concept of, is this a person who is allowed to synchronize this part of the application set? Technically, it, it has RBAC. You can have some person who's allowed to hit the sync button to initiate a progressive sync, maybe. But in my opinion, it all starts in Git if you have to gate who is allowed to merge that PR. I mean, Get, gets your state. You gotta, you gotta make sure the right people are merging. Uh, application sets currently can't have different types of sources due to the limitations of the templating system. There's an open PR. Uh, Jeffrey Muselli has put in a lot of work to provide a way to have both Helm and Customize in a single app set. Um, that's 2.10 territory. Yeah. Uh, we, we might be about to have to jump off stage. Yeah, please find but us. We We're happy to continue answering other questions um, after the talk. Thank you. Thanks so much.